What's up you PHP nutters? Today we're going to be talking a bit about databases and then a lot about PHP, specifically surrounding PDO. No singing, no rapping, and definitely no line dancing. Just good old fashioned PHP and uh, and databases. Over the course of this mini-series of completely unplanned videos, we're not just going to be taking a look at PDO, we're going to be owning it, okay? We're going to be taking that thing to a whole new level of understanding to create your own mini-framework specifically for reading and writing data so that you'll never need to look at PDO in the future. Well, well, kind of barely look at it. I mean, you could, you could just use a another existing framework, but what would be the fun in that? Yeah? <laughs> uh, data is at the heart of pretty much all applications, so it demands a lot of your attention. And as you'll discover, as your applications evolve and get bigger, managing your data becomes an absolute mother <laughs> There are many different database flavors to choose from, but when we first start working, probably the most common and the one that you'll start working with is MySQL or a MySQL drop-in like MariaDB or Pacona. Now, in my day-to-day -day life, I use Pacona, or I actually use Pacona cluster as well, and... Um, so Pacona is the database backend that I will be using during this video. I have been asked many times the difference between MySQLi and PDO and whether you should use one or the other. Now, there are some differences. Obviously, MySQL is restricted to sorry, MySQLi is restricted to MySQL. PDO has a capacity the capacity uh, and more drivers to connect with lots of other databases. Um, on top of that, I vastly prefer the way PDO parameters work. And my suggestion would be to go with PDO, hence where we are with getting started with PDO. So we can completely ignore MySQLi. Hurrah! Right, well, let's get cracking. Um, the first thing is I'm going to need a database, and it just so happens I have one. So I have a table called user uh, with an ID, a first name, and a last name. So that's the data we're going to be trying to fetch. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create a connection to our database. Now, we do that by creating a new PDO instance. When you first start out coding, it's probably going to look something a lot like this, where everything is bundled into your code. Um, so we start off with a new instance of PDO. The first argument is our connection string. This is basically identifying the database server and the database schema, i.e. The, the actual database we want to connect to. And the second parameter is going to be our username. The third parameter is going to be our incredibly secure password. And um, there is a fourth parameter, which will be other options, which we're not going to go into just yet. I can check whether the connection was successful. I'm just going to do a var dump of our PDO instance. And that should give me a PDO instance here. Now, incidentally, if it fails, it should throw an error. So if I put um, display, sorry, not display errors, any set display errors one, and then change my password to something incorrect, I should get a fatal error, which I do. So. I will put it back to the correct password and we've got our instance. Okay, good, we can move on. Now that we're connected to the database, I want to be able to fetch some data from it. So I want to be able to select all of this data in this table. Right, so I'm gonna create a statement. Statement equals PDO. Uh, we're gonna use prepared statements um, select star from user 
So we want to select all data from the user table and we're going to execute that. And we're just going to var dump out the resulting fetch all data using um, fetch ASOC. And if I refresh my web page, we'll see that the data, in fact, all data from my small little uh, user table here is now rendered on the page as an associative array where the column names form the keys and the values obviously are the cells. Okay, so we got our first rudimentary query working, but that's not really what this channel is all about. What I want to look at next is how we can take a step back and have another look at our code and see what's wrong with it so that we can refactor it as we work to make our code better so we don't end up with a whole bunch of spaghetti code the more that we work. So you want to do it as early as possible and catch things as early as possible. And it gets easier and easier to do that the more you do it. The first thing that any experienced developer is going to tell you is that you should never hard code your database credentials within the code itself. And I have seen many, many ways the developers try to include credentials into their code. And those would include things like global variable names, environment variable names, uh, statically included objects with specific naming structures and all of those scenarios have the same issue and that is it results in fragile code and potentially if we had multiple databases naming conflicts if it's not structured properly so what we actually want is something more robust like a passport that is responsible for itself and that's what we're going to create. We're going to create like a, a little database config passport. Okay, so we are back in the uh, PHP Nuts repository and we have created a brand new class inside a brand new namespace for database. So this is our config class, which is going to extend our basic object. If you're brand new to the channel or if you haven't seen it, we did a video on basic object and that is the best object you will ever write in PHP. Not that I'm biased, but you know, what we're going to do is we're going to extend that and give a new construct. We're going to accept some configuration properties, um, but what we're going to do is extend some defaults. So um, this merge, the properties provided, and the defaults will look something like this. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. So that is essentially what we saw in our um, DSN and second and third arguments for our PDO construct. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go back into our class and add in some dot blocks. Oops, um, I have these pre-prepared just so you don't have to sit and watch me type. Okay, so these dot blocks essentially grant access to these internal properties which are, is done by virtue of the fact that basic object has a cool magic method, right? So I'm just gonna add a doc block in for my construct. And then the next thing I'm going to do is create a new method called public function uh, to DSN. That will return a string which will look something a lot like this. And then I'll just add a quick doc block and head back to my script. Now I'm going to have to add in the autoloader from Composer to actually start using my class because otherwise it becomes a bit of a problem. Uh, and I've done that by adding a base path, which I can reuse later. So I'm going to create the uh, config now as a variable equals new config and the properties of that are going to be the host no no they're not because this is the default host so we can get rid of that our database name is that so we can change this to db name is p is php nuts then the char sets basically default the port is default Username is different, so 
username. I don't know why that indentation is wrong. Oh my god. Password is again really secure. Difficult to remember that. Okay, and then I'm just going to var dump out our config and render that on the page. So as you can see in our config now, although we're setting just three properties, we're using the defaults for the host, the port, the char set, and the type. All right. So now with those set, we can essentially go into our PDO object here, create config to DSN, and then config get username and config get password. So it looks a lot neater already. All right, so let's just make sure this is still working. All right, so our data is still loading. So clearly the DSN is working. And the next step is to completely abstract this away from this script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an ini file, just a config file, which is not publicly accessible um, to anyone on the web and also is not going to be included within my Git commits. So first of all, I'm going to create a, I've got a config directory up here. It might be quite small on your screen. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to add that config into my git ignore so that no files in my config directory are submitted with my commits. Right. Okay. Then I'm going to create a new any file. I just call it database.ini for now. And I'm going to copy paste the credentials that I have in here into this any file. Then I'm going to go back into the config class. We're going to create a brand new uh, method, uh, public static function load from any, which will accept a path as a string and will return a config object. If the file is not found, sorry, if the file, if the file does not exist, uh, we're just going to throw a new file not found exception, which is something I created earlier. And otherwise, we're going to get the contents of uh, the passing the ini file and return that contents um, as a new static. So we're using late static binding um, to generate an instance of the last static instance of this config, if that makes any sense. Anyway, it's essentially the same thing as doing this, but if we extended this for any reason, um, then it would do an instance of that object. Okay, right, so that's fine. Next, we go back into our script, and instead of config equals our hard-coded credentials, we can actually get config to load from an ini file. So it will be load from ini base path config um, database.ini. All right, so we'll go back into our uh, web page and then we'll just re render it and it still works. Whew, that's a relief. <laughs> okay, so basically, we have abstracted our database credentials completely away from our source code, even though we kind of require it to be in a specific place. That's fine because that place can be the same on our development machine, our staging machines, and our production machines. In fact, it can be the same on everyone's machine, but each of those machines don't have to have the same credentials, and our credentials aren't committed for security reasons in our repository code. So um, 
I think that's that's enough for today. I think I need a rest. <laughs> Uh, my voice is starting to go. So um, if you like this video, if you want to see more, because we're going to be pushing this even more, we're going to be creating a whole project around PDO, data abstraction, all sorts of stuff. And it's going to get better and better and better the more we use it. So if you want to see that, please subscribe. Please throw me a like and um, I'll see you guys in the next video.